Isaac Dennison was a Dane who wrote under that name. And I've been in love with her since I opened her first book. In life, she was the Baroness Blixen, and to her close friends, she was Tanya. One day, I took a plane to Copenhagen to visit her. She was living then in the same old house where she was born, where she died. I had friends who knew her well and who would drive me there next morning. I spent a sleepless night, and at daybreak, I took the first plane out of Denmark. What could a casual and uninvited visitor have presumed to offer except his stammered thanks? The visitor would be a bore, and the lover was too humble and too proud for that. And you must have a monument upon it. So the world will know that Pellegrina is dead. a woman going to work in the fields. Maria is her name, perhaps. And because her husband has been good to her, this morning she's happy. Or perhaps she isn't happy because he worries her with jealousy. There is another going to market on her donkey. And she's annoyed because the donkey is too old and slow. Someone else. There are so many women I could be. It is true then. Yes. Alone? Like this? And in the dead of night? Pellegrina's dead. Even the servants think so. I had no chance to say goodbye. Will you do that for me? It is struck midnight. To dawn of a new day. At dawn, Luigi will be working in the garden here. Please don't forget, Luigi. I will say goodbye for you. I do not ask where you are bound for. Many places. Little lioness, you will need money. I will earn my money, whoever I will be. Marcus, I will be many persons. Let this go with you, little lioness. I should like you to be easy. This ring will carry you left or right in all of your directions. Left or right, Marcus, but never home again. Not ever. Oh, Marcus, I would like you to be easy. In your heart, to be light again. Try being someone else. Give up this game of being Marcus Cocotta. And then what possible difference does it make to the world if one person, one old man, stands here in this garden for a night or two, mourning a singer he has buried in her grave? 
all the people in the world ought to be, each of them many persons. And they'd be easy at heart. They'd have a little fun. Let me at least follow you. If you need a friend to help them, you could send for me. Can you hear me, Marcus? But you must never speak to me. I could not bear to hear your voice without remembering the voice of Pellegrina and her great triumphs and this garden. What do you think, Marcus, of this paradise? She went away, as she had said. And upon the evening of that day, from time to time she wrote to make me help her when she wanted to get away, to change from one thing to another. I've never spoken to her since. This was the first thing Pellegrina ever wished for, a little white villa near Milan. It was her first possession. This house will always be here, awaiting the return of Pellegrina. Pellegrina says, before that happens, weeds will break through that piano. In any case, you'll never hear me speak that name again. to play on this piano. Yeah, this old piano goes back to your first days in Venice and my old twisted fingers. You can't expect much vehemence when you wear so many diamonds. Still, I made quite a noise on it, reminding you of our appointment. Did you really been here all this time? Why have you not yet put yourself at ease and taken off your hat and cloak? Perhaps I also hoped that you would change your mind and I could come with you. I certainly did hope that if I'd ever taught you anything, it was the first law of the professional. Be prompt. You make that sound as if it was an order. The clock down at the village is notoriously slow. Let's count our time by that. Never before have I received an order, a command, from any man. Not under my own roof. Or is it? This house will always be here. Awaiting the return of Pellegrina. You'll never hear her speak to you again. You're entering a convent then, a strict one with a vow of utter silence. Come, little sister chatterbox, raise up your chin and look again into the eye of he who knows you best. There will be many men who will come to know me. Who? Who will I know? I have observed you with your lovers. You were a goddess. You carried a great shield. But now you put it down. So how will you defend yourself? Perhaps it's an ocean to just suck me. You will get married. Quite the opposite. There, you smiled. Soon we'll be working miracles. You think this is a game? Can't you understand why I didn't want to hear you say goodbye? Everything I was is burned to cinders. Especially the laughter. That garden out there. How it used to ring with it. One question. Well? You're embarking on a journey. It may take you many times around the globe. And what's a journey, madam? Without a destination. It pleases you to think. But in this little villa, all commands have come from you. 
ask Luigi. He witnessed many documents. Luigi? Let him tell you of the bankers who came here all the way from London and from Frankfurt. Yeah. But money always bores you, so you fell asleep. It's almost midnight, Cara. Luigi here is putting out the lights. You will be carrying now, as you go forth on your adventures, not the battered shield of a Quixote, but the defense from which, though you live a hundred years, you will never rid yourself. You are a woman of enormous wealth. No. No, it, it's, it's not to be like that. A rich woman working as a harlot. So, that was your little notion. A season as a Roman whore. Dear little lioness, please don't ask me to be shocked. As for your money, it's all locked away in safe investments. She says, keep it there. I am not locked up with your money. I must have nothing. And Krieg says, that's what the saints are always praying for. Are you also going to be a saint? She says, I shall be everything. Krieg says, dear lioness, you will still be pacing in another cage. What is a journey, a true journey? It is a search. And what will you be searching for? Pellegrina, a little ease of heart. Krieg, in a bordel. These many men you say that you'll be having, you had your share of them already. I do not think they're what you will be searching for. She says, the world belongs to them. How else am I to enter it? Krieg, yes, but be careful, child. She says, let them be careful. I take your point, my lioness, but never, for one instant, allow yourself to fall in love. I know, I, I know. We don't want to see you wind up permanently among the wash tubs or kneading dough for someone's strudel. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. Behold, the miracle. She laughs. Take me along with you, and soon we shall see more of them. Pellegrina. I've had my share of laughter with you, Marcus, and I shall miss it sorely. But we are not to laugh again together. Craig says, will you come now and sit beside me one last time? No, Marcus, no. The last of the last times are over. I have already gone. He says, when you were still a child in Venice, you cast me for the role which I was to play out for you in the story of your life, remember? There was a kind of pact between us. And you sealed it. You kissed me on the lips. And that was 19 years ago. Go then and search, but do not be so vain and foolish as to look for happiness. Because there is no happiness to find? Your great soul, my lioness. And search for joy. Nothing else? Well, do not look for justice. Certainly not that. Why should I? Because finally, we all do. And there is no justice in the world, my heart. Yes, the Lord God has kept that for himself. Now that you've cornered her, killed her, you want the truth. 
pellegrina, leone, the prima donna assoluta had in her life two great devouring passions. And what was the first of these? It was for Pellegrina. <laughs> she was a devil to the other women in the opera. And it was a terrible and jealous love. And this other passion, it was not for me, young gentleman. No, I was, for the first half of my life, just such an unhappy young man as you are. I was rich and traveled much. I kept my own court of ballet to perform before me, and my friends were before me alone. I had 30 young girls who used to dance before me naked. And I was bored to death, young gentleman. I might well have died of boredom. Had I not happened to hear a small theater stage in Venice, the voice of Pellegrino Leone. Understood. I understood the meaning of heaven and earth, and the stars of life and death and eternity. She took you out into a rose garden filled with nightingales, and then lifted you up with her. higher than the moon. The other fashion of the life. That was for her audience, not for the proud princes and magnates and the lovely ladies all in jewels, but for the poorest in her audience and galleries. When times were hard, she gave them all the money and sold the clothes for them. She loved them. She love them beyond anything. That in the opera she should melt their hearts, that she should scatter her soul over them like stars. That was for her true happiness. And then came the disaster. The greatest singer in the world what is death? The moment when she ceases to breathe? Or the moment when she knows that she will never sing again? We are still determined on the truth after the disaster. There is no truth. It matters. She had a brave heart, you know. She was not frightened, not for one moment at the worst of it. But I was. I was afraid. Just at the moment Pellegrino made her entrance, a flaming piece of canvas dropped in front of her. She just went steadily on, but then the scene behind her burst into fire, and the whole theater rose up in panic. She looked for me, where I was sitting in my box. Yes, at that moment it was there. She looked at me. It was as if she meant to say, here we are to die together, you and I, Marcus. A thick smoke was spewing out. She was hidden from my eyes. I got out somehow to the street, but it was there that the news reached us. Pellegrina closed all the play was saved. And the people, when they heard that she was saved, fell on their knees. I called all the doctors of Milan around her that the burn which she had suffered quickly healed. It was found that she had lost her voice. Pellegrino Leone would never sing one note again. She grieved for her great name, for all her peers, and for her galleries. 
Those poor people who would give up a meal or a pair of shoes, the wages of hard labor, to crowd up high in the hot gallery to hear Pelagonia preaching. How were they to live on in the dark of night when their one star had fallen? There was no Madonna in the skies to smile on them. Time, when I belonged in the land, used to fly lightly, like a May breeze, as a summer shower. But now, a day was like a year. She asked for poison, for strong poison. And I gave it to her. The lions trapped and shut up in cages grieve more for shame than for hunger. But you'll excuse me if I speak of things too wonderful for you young gentlemen to understand. But where do your women keep their honor in these modern times? Do they know the word even when they hear it? Why did she not take the poison? She did, young gentleman, but it had no effect. And so she told me she may really have believed she'd taken all of it. The truth, the truth was that she, she could not die. There was too much life in her. The truth. You want the truth, young gentleman. The truth is that I have known this woman at a time when she was known to all the world by her real name. I saw her first on a small theater stage in Venice. She was then 16 years old. I bought her a villa near Milan. And when she was traveling, she stayed there and had many friends around her. And sometimes we were alone together. And then we used to laugh much at the world. And we would walk together, arm in arm, in the garden. I alone of all people knew her. Lovers. <laughs> I've seen her lovers. Running around, yapping around, they're flattering and fighting. But no, a young gentleman. I was a friend. And at the gate of paradise, when the keeper of the gate shall ask me who I am, I shall give no name and no position. I shall answer him. I was the friend of Pellegrino Leone. The Pellegrino. The greatest opera singer in the world. <laughs> she used to call herself my lioness. That was because Mark was my name, and until we first met in Venice, that was what she was. A gloomy lioness. Cut.